how ink uh, let them ink blocks copies from you. You can see you put together you have to score five and you can predict about sixty percent of the patient achieve e antigen slow conversion just within six months or therapy. And if you add another forty percent they respond, you can see that one year after the end of therapy, you can achieve about almost seventy percent e antigen slow conversion. I don't say this will be respond in all patients, but in the right patient by looking at the baseline characteristic. So now go move forward. Once you start picking the front, you can ensure that the patient is going to respond well by looking at the on treatment response predictor. Let's start in eugenogen positive chronic hepatitis B. The formal own study and also Helianzen Helianzen study in our own publication. You can see that we look at the AOT flare and you know that in the front is a immune moderating agent. It enhances positive response and this can result in AOT flare. Usually occur in the first 12 weeks of interferon therapy. And our group at Halley Jensen, we define the term of AOT flare into two types. The first one is a post induced flare. That means DNA decline at least more than one lot within 90 days after the peak of AOT. And the other one is a AOT rising before flare or less than one lock decline within 120 days after the peak of AOT as a viral of new flare. You can see that if you divide the AOT flare into different types, uh, host in new flare would mean flare associated with a significant decline in DNA within three months after the AOT flare. It's associated with a better E energy slow conversion. As you can see that 50% form Helianzen study and 44% from our study. And this is significantly higher than world in new flare, 20% and 0% uh, from our post 2 study. Helianzen look in more detail of the AOT flare. You can see that those who have post in new flare has a significantly greater decline in surface antigen. You can see that it's more than 3.2 locks, comparing with growth in the flare, have very really minimal decline in surface antigen. And if you look at anyone after AOT flare and have surface antigen decline at least half locks a per mil within four weeks of AOT flare, you can see that this can predict as energy loss up to 64%. We change from 3% as loss to almost 2 percent of those patients will lose their self-engine if after interferon therapy. They have AOT flare and DNA decline and also surface energy decline at least half lock IUPMU within four weeks of AOT flare. And then we look at the surf engine level, it's our own publication and we published in uh, four years ago. Look at the surf engine level at week 12 during PEP interferon therapy. You can see that if the patient has surf engine level below 1500, either at week 12 or week 24 treatment, this had the highest e silicon conversion up to almost 55% and also have a DNA below 2,000 and you will be almost also over 50% and you can see that 11% of these patients who have surface level below 1,500 at week 24 of PEG in the flow therapy achieve as antigen loss. And that's the, the one that you can predict who going to respond well but for me the most important one is negative predictive value. You can stop in the front in those who are not going to respond because in the front is quite expensive, have a lot of side effects, require subcutaneous injection. So we can pick up someone that we can stop earlier at week 12 or week 24. For example, this our study uh, combined with the Hellions and we combine ethnic group together, Caucasian and Asian genotype A, B, C, D. Because before this study, we have two publications. Hellions said identified that no SD card at week 12 is a stop remove for indigen positive but genotype D Caucasian. We published the same study just a few months after that. Say we found that that not can be applied among Asians because 
known as decline at B12 in genotype B and C, 27 percent still will achieve in silicone Therefore, we agreed to combine uh, these two studies together and we published together. We look at estrogen level and decline. We found that estrogen level at V24 treatment, it is still higher than 20,000 by it provides a very negative predictive value up to 97%, only 3% response. So this can be stopping rule for all ethnic and for all genetic. And that means you can stop patient at V24 in those who are not going to respond well. Now we change to E antigen negative chronic hepatitis B. Oh, I can't use it any longer. Stop using it. Not move. Okay, now come back to the presentations. And now we move to the EDGM negative clinic hepatitis B. Again, this form of our own study, we look at the S decline uh, during interferon therapy in E negative clinic hepatitis B. You can see that those who had S decline at least 10%, either at week 12 or week 24, associated with a good response. Uh, up to 6 to 12 months post therapy and you can see that almost 47 percent still have a good response one year post treatment for up and 40 percent still have they, they respond less than 2000 a unit up to five year post treatment for up more importantly look at the surface antigen level any e negative patient who have s decline more than 10 percent at week 12 or week 24 with poor treatment for up for five years without another further treatment, you can see that almost one quarter of them has S antigen silicon at five years post treatment for up. And at the end of therapy, uh, Morisua and Lampusico also look at the surface antigen level at the end of interferon therapy in E negative patient. They found that at the end of treatment, if surface antigen level less than 10, you can see that 88% remain sustained response up to six months post therapy. In contrast, none of those who still have uh, antigen level greater than 5,000 IUPMU achieve sustained response. Therefore, as you know that E negative usually associated with a higher relapse after the end of interferon therapy. Pietro look at the extension treatment duration up to two years in E negative patient and he found that uh, one year poor treatment for up. Those who have extension treatment for two years has significant higher DNA suppression than those who have a standard of care for the we. That can be true in Asian population, so this study in Chinese population. They also comparing between 48 week treatment and 72 treatment among e antigen negative chronic hepatitis B. What you can see that in those who attend treatment to 48 to 72 weeks, have the significantly higher response, either six months or one year post treatment for up, partly estrogen care landlay. You can see about 30. 5%, one third of the patient has certain response with the treatment extension. However, it's not so nice to extend treatment to a year and a half or two years to everyone. So we look at this mark. You can see this is really important. They look at the surface energy level and comparing between one year treatment duration and two year treatment duration. You can see if the patient had the test level at the end of one year, less than 1,000, you attend treatment duration to 96 weeks, 80% have certain response, significantly higher than 48 weeks. However, if the patient remain high surface energy level, less than 2,500 at the end of treatment, do not attend treatment duration. Even you give them another one more year, you can see no significant difference in certain response, 17% versus 10% for treatment duration 96 week, comparing 48 week respectively. How about the stopping rule? Stopping rule for E negative. They found that among genotype D, Caucasian, no S decline at week 12 and DNA less than 2 log decline at week 12 have almost 100% negative predictive value. So you can stop at week 12. However, this is not 
can be applied among Asian study from Taiwanese found that follow this same criteria in E negative among Asian. 25% still achieve certain response at one year for treatment follow-up. So we still need to do some more study to identify stop below among E negative in Asian population. So I will conclude with the interferon therapy in this way. With based on the current available uh, information, we will suggest that for E positive chronic hepatitis B, if you treat them with PEC interferon alpha, look at the surface and the fortification at week 24 treatment. If it's less than 1500, continue treatment for the week, and you can expect 57% ease of conversion. If they still have engine level greater than 20,000, stop treatment, switch to other type of therapy such as nuclear cyanide or add or nuclear cyanide, but this requires further clinical trial. But those who in between, between 1,500 and 20,000, you might extend treatment duration to 32 weeks and you expect 35% uh, E antigen single conversions. Again, among E negative patients, you look at the week 24 during interferon therapy. If it has less than one lot decline, you can combine or switch to the, another treatment strategy because certain response will be less than 15%. But if the patient has estrogen more than one lot decline, you continue treatment. Look again, estrogen level at week 48. If it's less than 10, then you stop treatment at one year and you expect 88% certain response. For those who more than 10, but less than 1,000, you might extend treatment duration to two weeks and expect certain response around 80%. And those who remain high estrogen level get than 7,500 IU stop treatment and switch to nuclear cyanide block because it's not going to respond even if you attend treatment duration to two years. Now I will go to another treatment strategy with antiviral agent, nuclear cyanide, nuclear cyanide. It's so simple to say that in order to achieve the certain or maintain response, use the high protein agent and high genetic barrier. You will have a good certain or maintain DNA expression. Like from the Kauvia study up to five years, you can see that if you use this protein agent up to five years, over 94% of the patients have DNA undetectability. And this good DNA suppression also associated with a significant improvement in liver histology. Even though with that one fibrosis or cellulosis, it can reverse to be less than 5% or even no 5% after 5 to 6 years DNA suppression. And this is also similar to the result of the Tinoxovia study with potent uh, antiviral agent and high genetic of Tinoxovia. You can see that humility DNA suppression approach to 100% up to 4 to 5 year DNA uh, suppression with Tinoxovia therapy. And again, with DNA suppression also associated with the improvement in liver histology. However, we are living in Asia Pacific region, sometimes even in Thailand, we can't start with a high protein and high genetic barrier due to the economic constraint. What we're going to do if we have to start with the less protein and also less expensive patient, I just recommend you to follow the roadmap concept. Look at the baseline characteristic and on treatment response. For example, E positive patient use lower genetic barriers such as TB within. If the patient with baseline DNA less than 9 lots, AOT at least more than 2 times, you can see that 71% of this patient achieve DNA and detectability of week 24. And you can see that with 2 year treatment result, almost 90% still DNA suppression, 52% E still conversion, and only 1.8% drug resistance. And this same act with E negative. You use TV within. In DNA based line less than seven log, you can see that over 95% of these patients will achieve DNA undetectability at week 24 and continue to two years. You can see 91% still DNA suppression well and only 2.3% duct resistance. Therefore, we propose the concept of roadmap among low genetic barrier agents, not to the high genetic barrier. 
if you use lamivudine, tamivudine, check DNA B24. If it complete DNA suppression, just continue treatment monotherapy and monitor that withstand. But it had a partial response, still detectable, and less than 2,000 as on non clot resistant agent. And this from our own publication, we look at tamivudine therapy and intensify with as on tenophobia among those who still DNA. Uh, detectable week 24, and you can see our response at two years, the percent in race color, 51% E KLM, 44% E silicon version, 7% ES mobile, and 4% uh, E silicon gen, and no dark resistance during the clinical trial up to two years. Had a Chinese study also look at the roadmap concept, start with tamivudine as or on the phobia among those who still did a detectable week 24, and comparing with community monotherapy as standard of care without roadmap approach, you can see that those who follow roadmap concept have lower incidence of virological breakthrough and duct resistance over two year treatment follow up and have the better DNA suppression and easy low conversion and no duct resistance. Lastly, we talk about using engine level and pegnephon to improve the tail response because of what? And we know from this all clinical trial, we know that anti viral agent is easy to use, one daily, minimal side effect, the total anti viral suppression. The problem is the lab high reactivation after treatment discontinuity. You can see that even DNA, uh, even suppression, and keep it another consolidation for more than one year, less than one year, more than two years with low genetic value agent, with high protein agent, you can see that SPV reactivation occur in about 50% within five years post treatment discontinuation. So we might have to treat until it's locked in order to achieve such a response with nuclear side, nuclear thyroid. The problem is the clinical trial for many countries, including Thailand itself, you can see even up to five years anti cover with a very good DNA separation, no duct resistance, but you can see the incidental is low. It's so minimal, less than 